today it is 10 o'clock 10 o'clock uh, a.m january 19th 2023 it's brisk it's brisk and chilly same kind of thing chilly with clear skies here in los angeles uh glendale i should say la county my friends and i'm happy to be here i'm happy to be joined by Mr. Doug, DJ Doug. Good DJ morning. Doug and Lucy Doug. Good morning. Good day to you. And we're also joined by legendary disgraced film director Woody Allen is here. What's up, everybody? <laughs> You want to get into this now, or what's going on with you? I, I guess so. I got yeah. I, I went the other day, and it's been like three years since I had a, a, a haircut. So I just like Are you cutting trim, trimming it on. I your would just own? do it myself, and I just got, got to a point where I just gave up, and mm-hmm. I, I I let my eight year old uh, just cut it. She just cuts Correct. it, you know, around the side because I always have a hat on anyway. Yeah. But uh, so I went to the get a haircut, and I got. We're getting right into I got, it. Folks. I just I'll like, tell you that much. I sat there and. He took my glasses off, and I sat there for half an hour. He took your glasses. He took my glasses. Off. What did he strap which you means in? Which he's like, I can't see anything, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I just trusted him. I don't care. It was, so you did, it was just like, like looking at you, like, well, oh, he's it, doing great back there. I was, probably. yeah. Well, I said like, I go this, I go, you know, this. Mm-hmm. And but he he only he only spoke Spanish. I only spoke English. You look at the clown. Yeah, yeah. but then <laughs> I'm making you look like a like a clown. And then I go uh, the back. You can fade. You know the uh-huh. back neck. So. He, which I didn't realize he heard give me a fade. So I so that's so for a half hour I sat there it was the most relaxing thing. He like got the the little mm-hmm. thing out and where the fuck are then, the sound effects for that? So this is what we've got here, guys. Oh, okay. This is what well, we're working with. That looks I think it looks nice. Yeah. It looks better than it did a few days ago when you yeah, said it. But it's, it's like grow. yeah, and now it grows. So there it is. Let's hear it for Vic and his. So what do you uh, think of that hairs. story, guys? Let's get a round of applause from the Zoom. Thank you. Which is your uh, Mr. Matt, producer Matt, Captain Carlin, back in the producer chair. How exciting is that for the audience? Welcome back. Good day, mate. Oh. Matt was down under for. Would you say too long? Way too long. <laughs> Way too long. It's a terrible place. Rabbit no, kangaroos. No. Good day, mate. Nasty Anthony. Three weeks down there? Three weeks. It's just you, the wife, the kid. It's a lot of time with a five year old. Yeah. <clears throat> but we saw some time. other people down there? We did. We did. We had a great time. Shout out to Little Wobbly. Did you great go to place. my recommendation, Greg's? Uh, 
Yes, it wasn't Greg's. What was it called? Harry's? What was it? That was restaurant? Bill's. 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 Bill's was great. Fantastic. Bill's in Bondi. Bill's, Bill's in Bondi Beach. With body trim. Great place. Well, welcome back. Thank we you. carried on without Come you on. beautifully, in my opinion. Beautiful. Went better, I might say. You, you were enjoying the show from Australia? <laughs> of course. Australia? It went better. <laughs> And our special guest today. Let me give you a rundown of the show. Legendary, <laughs> legendary film. My, my hair is fucked. I need a haircut. You know, yeah, we should do it now. I'll do it. I'm gonna do something. Fuck I don't this. need one. No, Doug, you're, we you got to talk about your hair. You look. <laughs> <laughs> what are you an oasis now? Some tape on that. Yeah, I'm gonna tape my tape hair back. Up. Taping my hair back. I can't. Oh do I just God. cut mine, my own. Uh, oh. I just cut it up so I can see that it. I'm good. Nice. Yeah. I'm taping it up. <laughs> taping his hair. <laughs> now, what you, oh, oh shit! What is this dire straits? That's not. <laughs> you have a permanent headband. <laughs> <sighs> This is a bad you get idea. Plastic too. surgery for this a permanent. Is, does this headband. look better? This was not thought through. I would. <laughs> it looks it's like a right. bandage. But <laughs> <laughs> Morning, everybody. <laughs> you don't really see a lot of monocles now. <laughs> no, you don't. Morning, everybody. <laughs> if you're listening to the show, you gotta watch. You gotta join us on YouTube if you're on the podcast network. Oh, uh, then. Carson, you okay down there? I'm doing great. You look fantastic. My gift, my guest is legendary film director Rick Alverson. Uh, is joining us here in the studio, having some co- uh, water. Of course, Rick is the son of the great Alver. Great Alver, known, <laughs> known for all the work he does. Uh, Rick Alverson uh, is here to talk me about just about everything i can't i'm so glad to have you is this the first time you've been on office hours or have you called in before no i've been on several several times <laughs> <laughs> there you go correct the record folks correct the record but you and your uh and your band lean year will be performing later that'll yep. be ex- great great music beautiful i'm going to plug the album here let me just get it's real the album. Mor- it's morning music. It, it is M O U R N I G. Morning music. This is the album from Lean Year. Big problem, big uh, production problem here. You got to look at the back nothing here. On nothing. The back. No, there's not. Uh, this Bold. tells me there ain't no music on here, pal. Let it go. It's a blank right. record. Now, that cover, is that is that an authentic vintage That's picture? Is that mom. like a template or something? That's or my a, mom in 1955. Good. Wow. A lot of headroom nice. there. Regina. Yeah, I like it. Like Anyways. the wallpaper. Rick and uh, She'd Lean be Year. very happy to be on Office Hours. Lean, <laughs> lean Year. We'll keep it clean today. Lean Year will be performing this Friday at the Lodge Room here in Los Angeles in Highland Park with special guest. Let me look it up here. Tim Heidecker. And I'm going to do some new stand-up material. Working out some shit for the UK tour, which is uh, coming up in less than two months. And I'm gonna come out and play some music. Okay. And you're gonna get a taste of lean year today. And if you're living in the Los Angeles area, you're gonna be buying tickets today. That's what's gonna be happening. Um, that's all I have. Hello? <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining us. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to this. Remember that one? Christmas song from your. No. Thank you for listening to this. No, it was a Christmas song I wrote for Office Hours. Thank you for listening to the Office Hours show. No. I don't remember. Anyway. Rick. Take a zoomer. Yes, good idea, Doug. Thank you. I'll take over. All right. uh, Let's just get right into it with Eli. You blonde boss. Hello, Eli. How you doing, love? Ooh, I like that. Hey, guys. How's everything going? All right. Where are you calling from, eh? Um, well, you know, I was born in Cumberland, Maryland, but, uh, everyone <laughs> says I'm also in Woodland Hills, California. Oh, so, yes. Yeah. But I definitely wanted to talk about the comedy. Yes. Talk- so listen, folks, Rick's here. I think you're an open book and people love your movies, the comedy, entertainment, and then the mountain. 
Yeah. And then some other ones. The Builder. Yeah. New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem. And uh, Madonna asked for a copy of that back in the day. Oh, <laughs> really? She requested it. Huh. Yeah. Out of the blue? She wanted to see it before it, 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 it uh, screened. How did she hear about it? You know, she has... Is this true? <laughs> yeah, it's true. She sent some <laughs> lackey over to, you know, pick it up. And... Where did she hear about it from? Uh, don't know. You know. You didn't rumors. follow up on that. Rumors. Well, all right. So, yes, Rick's, Rick's uh, one of the greats, and uh, you're welcome to ask him any question you'd like. So it sounds like it's about the comedy film I starred in. Yes. One of the reasons. It There's a, a double well. question. It'll be a dual I, question. It's just interesting when I see these movies with people that I really love, and their character is so terrible. You and I hate, I hate what this person I love has become. Like it's me? different. Well, <laughs> no, I love you. That's how Tim, my parents I, felt about the film. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I it's it, it was like tough for me to watch because I enjoy Tim so much, and to oh, see good. him play this terrible character, yeah. like He's trying to say, ruin his career. <laughs> it, it, it worked. No, no. Um, so, what is it like, Tim, to play like a real asshole versus like your comedy character? And then, what is it like for you to direct, you know, uh, this such an asshole or such like a terrible? <laughs> Character. Well, I, I just, I, I mean, I like. All right, I, I was, <laughs> fucking Madonna from twenty minutes ago. I was sort of uh, raised on uh, the cinema that I love was all just awful, awful people cinema. Give us an so. example of that Nicholson and Five Easy Pieces. Uh, yeah, he's not that bad, and is, is he really? I don't remember. Yeah, he seems Nicholson more shiny, polite. <laughs> Yeah, Nicholson in The Shining. Um, Nicholson in Batman. He was the fucking Joker, you not know, a good guy. Cast of Eddie's movies are full of a bunch of assholes. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I love Batman. It was a, it was a, for me. <laughs> I uh, as we talked about that movie, I knew guys like that, and uh, I don't. I didn't think I knew guys that were quite. I didn't know guys that were quite as you know nihilistic as that character was, or wealthy, or wealthy. Correct. <laughs> So we amped that part of it up. Yeah. And, you know, I think in that movie, there's not a real clear uh, definition of how much anything that guy says is what he believes. He's more into just kind of ironically distancing, uh, like having kind of ironic distant, distant conversations with people for amusement, not necessarily because he believes anything he's saying. Yeah, or boundary, boundary pushing. Yeah, just... Edgy. He's like, I mean, unreliable it's, narrator. Sure. Problematic <laughs> soul. Yeah. Problematic soul. All this stuff comes out like, you know, it's interesting because it all comes out like pre kind of alt right, pre kind of mm. all that stuff. Um, which I feel like post this movie, I don't think it influenced that, but it kind of. I mean, so saw that yeah. kind of character pop up a little more prevalent. Was he there yeah, on January 6th, that character? Huh? Was that character there on January 6th? I don't think he could be bothered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, the Trump thing, I think, is a very legitimate as prescient of that sort of, you know, insofar as yeah. that he has this unli unlimited potential and possibilities because of his privilege and wealth. And But there's nothing saying, you know, here's what the world, here's the edge of the world. Yeah. So he just walks out and, and is, is looking to be checked. And nothing checks him. Yeah. And, and we, then he, so it's just a big narcissistic id ball. We talked about the sort of idea of institutions having kind of <laughs> failed us or failed these characters and have get, provided no structure or meaning for their lives. So they're Come left on, with man. what? They're left with humor in, and yeah. their own insular friends. <clears throat> yeah. In, so, a, in American like liberal democracy. Yeah. Um, I had recently, I posted something. I guess it was about when Kanye was going on and on about Hitler as he did on the Alex Jones show. And I, I don't know what I posted, but somebody, people were writing me saying, you were talking about Hitler in that movie, the comedy as if that was a documentary or something. Like, people, people get confused about, uh, you know, everything movies <laughs> yeah. not being real. I know. It's like, <laughs> I am a genius. My poor Especially wife. You can... What's that? Just especially for you, because so many times your characters and your like real persona are blurred or whatever. Yeah. And so like us as an audience, we're like, what do we believe? And then we get confused. And But you should have. I mean, there 
there's a I mean, media literacy that has to that has to yeah. play into this. You 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 know going into a movie that yeah. unless it's pretty clearly <clears throat> a documentary about somebody, and even that has its ways of not telling you the full truth. Even like uh, Mr. America. <laughs> like Mr. America, but that's you know a mockument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, sure. yeah, it's been ten years, and last year we uh, celebrated, celebrated. It. Yeah, get together and the tin cup. New York and went out on the town. Tin anniversary, right, man? <laughs> We'd had two screenings in New York. One was at Metrograph, and the other was at. We had two screenings at Metrograph. Two screenings at Metrograph, and then another one at but where? The other one was at uh, uh, at MoMA, and there were it was very uh, sparsely populated with a <laughs> bunch of like you know some Film midtown nerds. art house yeah weirdos, and that I uh, that was my favorite screening. Who like because it was a, people talk about that film as a polarizing movie and all your no. films are to some degree but that one failed to kind of capture this sort of money uh, money yes <laughs> it ca it didn't money. capture like the sort of smarty pants New York uh, sort of New York film media zeitgeisty t conversation that perhaps could have made it a bigger movie it kind of got like admonished by those people oh yeah yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, to go I mean, through that. you know, that's because you know you just like yeah, we got a lot of crap. You you'll remember for not uh, not punishing our protagonist on screen, right? That not, might, not making a morality yeah, tale out. There of isn't it. A, an on screen reckoning, and so and it's interesting. I don't know how much you want to talk about this, but in the original script and early cuts, there almost was, or there kind of was. Yeah, yeah, and you said. Cut. And you cut it. Yeah. You said, yeah. fuck it. Let them yeah. figure it out. So anybody who's seen the movie, so in, in the, in, we shot uh, Tim's shot for, character. We shot for eight months on this movie. <laughs> eight months. <laughs> on, the, on the eighth month, on the, on the eighth day of the eighth month, uh, we sent him out in the dinghy into the Hudson uh, after he had been beaten at a construction site. And we had all of this yeah. facial blood uh, and you know, swollen, swollen prosthetics and and uh, and, he, and it was an amazing performance. You're out there screaming your lungs out into the Hudson, and we got taken by the tide, if you don't remember. No, I don't, really? Yeah, the three of us, and you, you got concerned yeah. because we got washed up toward the George Washington Bridge. We were headed that way. Oh, shit. <laughs> and it was just uh, me, you, and, and uh, Mark, George Washington DP, <laughs> alone in a dinghy. Nobody knew how to drive a dinghy. Oh, my God. I you don't were, remember. You were that. manning, the, manning the, the dinghy engine. <laughs> yeah, we were out there so in, I mean, we were out there sailing uh, and doing water stuff in the busy, basically one of the busiest ports in the world, New York, and navigating through like ferries and oil tankers and shit. It was a little stressful. It's dangerous. It's fun though. Yeah. I have a question. It was actually more dangerous than we let you, than we told you. Yeah. No, you, nobody knew what they were doing. <laughs> Those uh, are the old days. Yes, Doug. We were reckless. Um, if you want to make a movie like that, where do you start? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> Good question. I, I am curious. You, yeah. like, I you mean, have don't... to have some kind of budget. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah. that's like a niche kind of indie movie. With You give us an origin story yeah, on that like, movie. Where do you start? Uh, or you're rich and you could just afford it. You're very no. wealthy. We should get that out of the way. <laughs> get out of the way. <laughs> Independence of autobiography is what it was. Sure. The, uh, Alver, Mr. Alver uh, <laughs> invented super glue. <laughs> the name is uh, Nicholas uh, the Swede. Al Alber was the first Alverson. Oh, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> Didn't ask for that. <laughs> Um, where do you start? Uh, well, it, the movie w wouldn't have happened without Jag Jaguar, the, the record label that Tim used to be was on. was dropped by them. Dropped by yeah. them, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the, I, I, I put out records on them for since 96, so a lot of bands nobody ever heard of. Mm -hmm. And you're still on the on the. No, oh, oh, no, no, I'm too old. Okay. So you were dropped So well. first you've got to be on a, in a band if you want to make a movie. <laughs> yeah. okay. okay, let me write this down. Call it Mr. Jag Jaguar. So Chris Watson, who my character is named after, well, no, I, there was an inside joke that I, I you know, had all of these, this, uh, this awful little coven of sh shitheads in, yeah. the, in the film. And, and that the, the inside joke that is unimportant is that I named them after the, the, the four the people, the, the who people paid funding for the, the movie. Yeah, paid for the film. Um, <clears throat> but uh, you had made a couple movies. Who cares how you got that funded? We don't, we're not going to get into that. You got it made. <laughs> you put the films, money together. Yeah. 
then and you're and friends Jack, with these Jack, guys and you say i got this movie i want to make i want yeah but they they were they wanted to explore the i mean i didn't know what what i was doing and i mean yeah. we had it was the biggest crew i'd had i went from like five person crew on the previous film to jerusalem to we had like 25 it was still very small 25 people yeah yeah but um mostly a great group of people i would say mostly yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some young kids who are just like overwhelmed with what we were doing. Probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was an ambitious, you know, it wasn't in, in, in uh, as we know now, you know, it wasn't mm -hmm. that big of a budget. And right. It was a, for New York City, pretty damn small and uh, what, dangerous out there on the water. I mean, what a great, like if you want to, one idea, Doug, you want to make a movie, go somewhere where it's <laughs> going to look good no matter where you point the damn camera. Uh, right, because yeah. you just shoot in New York. You're just like suddenly you're you're this guy making a Woody Allen yeah, movie. No problem. <laughs> uh, uh, Did that right. answer your question? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got these guys with money at a record label. It's just like uh, uh, Monty Python with the uh, Pink Floyd and the Led Zeppelin and everybody. Oh uh, yeah, I, I get it. Like Jack Jaggy. Why are they called Jag Jaguar? Don't get into that. It was named after a dungeon uh, master, some kind of Darius Van Armen. Uh, oh. All right, get started, into it then. Started, started, I guess I'm not in charge. Named it after some kind of dungeon, Dungeons and Dragons um, misspelling. Of, I think. Yeah, but then, you know, what, you, you have this loose concept of a character and scenarios, and, and you had written kind of a... Um, an outline that you consider a script, but it was no, it's not a script meant or a treatment. It was really just a, it was treatment. Yeah. yeah. I mean, cause the first two movies I just worked with, with the exception of Will Oldham, who was, had done some acting. Yeah. I just worked with non-actors and that's what I wanted to do. I was like, I don't want to write scripts. I want to write treatments and I want to get in there and get messy. And yeah. And do you tell them like what to and, say on the set or do you just tell them what the idea that they want to? Well, I, now I just write, you know, Totally conventional, scripts. fully scripted. But like back in the early films, you just <clears throat> if you have an outline. They just know what is supposed to happen in the scene, and they yeah, yeah. Because you know, I mean, it's like when I was a kid, I I didn't really listen to what anybody said to each other. I just listen to the way they said it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I couldn't understand words until yeah, I was yeah. sixteen. No, um, it would be like but, a typical scene. Would if depending it, on who you, we'd talk about what you wanted to get out of that scene. And the treatment what would say, you know, there's an exchange and it hits these notes, and this yeah. is the mood, and this is the 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 topics, and this is the kind of conversation it is. And if there are plot points in it, it covers what those are. And so, yeah. and then we'd set about it. And it's totally natural for Tim to do that. Yeah, sort it's of the best way. To, it's the best way to work. Yeah. because then, I do other things which is very scripted and very, <laughs> and I have a very hard time with that. I have a very hard time. Yeah. You know, it becomes just a, a memorization rote kind of thing where you just have to, like, go over it over and just yeah. it dies. It dies uh, the energy. Well, there's a way to make it work again, but and then we I much of, prefer being yeah. like, here's what we want to say. Let's shoot a bunch. Let's, you know. And we spun off of Tim's sort of, you know, his a bit of your voice. I mean, we confused your instincts in there and stuff, yeah. which was, you know, that's where it gets fun. I would say, it, what? you know, it was a great uh, opportunity, and I appreciate you. Oh, thank it you. To me. Yeah. Let me Thank become you, a, was a, wonderful. a collaborator Basically in take the process clips of what I say and play it on the show. I like that, man. Let's do this. Let's do the city of the day. Let's keep on schedule today. Yeah. <laughs> the city of the day. From Apple. City of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, the city of the day is sponsored by Sledgehammer Magazine. Do you like smashing through walls and turning boulders into gravel? Do you see concrete and wish it was dust? Then pick up the latest issue of Sledgehammer Magazine, the perfect publication for sledgehammer professionals and enthusiasts alike. Get tips on grip techniques, <clears throat> real tales from the rock pit, drool over glossy photos of beautifully bashed destruction. You can even win a trip to the Cinder Block Championship in Skokie, Illinois. It's not all carnage though. Our latest issue has poetry from hammer swinging legend Frank Ruin. Plus, a deep dive into Donkey Kong and his long-lasting effect on sledge culture. So head to your nearest hardware store and grab an issue today. Better yet, get a subscription. Office Hours listeners get a free year of Sledgehammer Magazine when they sign up for a nine-year subscription. That's 10 full years of iron swimming, iron swinging, brick crumbling, anger-reducing catharsis. Go to sledgehammer.com. 
Rage slash rocks must shatter for more information. Sledgehammer magazine smashing through walls since 1978. Rock and roll, baby. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Oh. All right, that's very good. Uh, who's wow, the city dude. of the day, man? Who is it? Give it to me. Give it to me straight. Good old Eric Peterson. Are you there? Yes, I am. Hello, Eric, whose uh, father, of course, is Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I will always do this joke. You come at me with fucking Alverson or uh, Peterson or whatever. I'm going to fucking nail you with my dad joke there. <coughs> All right. All right. City of the day is San Antonio. Texas. San Antonio. Yee-hoo. Indeed. It's all right. Play. Oh, we do some. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, something was making sound. Turning oh, sure. it off. That's a sweet um, looking micro you got back there, baby. Oh, yeah. Run that oh, sucker for me. Why don't you run that back? Yeah. yeah, give her 10 seconds. What the fuck cares? 10 seconds? Yeah, give her 10 seconds. You got to put something in it, though, or it's going to explode. Put your phone uh, in there. You got to put like a cup of water or something. Oh, put no. your ass in there. Yeah, wait, wait, can you run the microwave? No, no, you can't. Uh, <laughs> of no, course, turn it off. It doesn't know. Turn it off. You have to put tin foil in. Wait, why, but Doug, what would be the big, I mean, Vic, why would it be the, a big deal if you had nothing in the microwave? Think about what, there's nothing getting heated except like there's energy and it's going to explode. It has to go somewhere. <laughs> it's like a ball of energy. I mean, sir, what's heating up, you know? The glass little, that's little in gla there? No. Did it, did it explode? Maybe it'll be a, a mess. I don't yeah. know. Anyways, Play do you have any uh, Do you have any questions for us? Oh, sure. Uh, uh, well, I guess it's a joke. I'm applying for some jobs in a minute. Anyone want to be a, a can I can I put people on my um, oh, what do they call that? The uh, reference. Uh, you reference? Want to, I'll be your reference. You need a reference. Uh, reference. I'll be your reference, baby. Where are you trying to work at? Best Buy. Um, I'm trying to work with a, a youth orchestra Ooh. in town. I'm a musician, a teacher. Freelance and well, don't uh, tell them you were on this show. No, they'll, yeah, don't, <laughs> they'll do a background check and that'll be it. Oh, no, that's fine. They can do a background what, check. What experience do you have? Um, I've been teaching and playing for 13 years professionally, I guess. Uh, I got a bachelor's and master's in music. Um, all right, name this piece of music. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's correct. You'll stop me. Name this one. That's <laughs> <laughs> all you get. Beethoven 13. No, oh, Beethoven. Oh, where are you from? I, I know. I'm Wait, how Beethoven's about, fifth. How about Beethoven. this one? I got one. There is no third. <laughs> oh well uh i mean if you're thinking jobs yeah there it is there it is or symphony and i can't remember off oh it's no, oh it's it is taken from that that's right oh. <laughs> yeah, okay you got me you stumped me uh, stealing music but stealing it well mm -hmm. good on him you know hide, hide it so why why do you think you would be helpful to these kids and their music um oh well because i've been i mean i've been teaching middle schoolers, high schoolers for, you know, 13 years. And really, I guess it's more for me in the sense of, I don't want to drive around so much. I just drive. <laughs> I think that's a fair um, point. I have to go from school to school. So, I mean, I've just been doing it for a long time. I think um, uh, uh, as a freelancer, you know, I got to do all my own recruiting, uh, I teach, billing, uh, you know, scheduling, things like that. And so I'm just trying to all right, well, if anybody in the yeah, San Antonio sense. area is looking for a music coordinator, a music, uh, uh, youth, youth music uh, supervisor, Orchestra, uh, conductor, uh, reach out through, are I you on it. Patreon? Yes, I'm a, I'm a Patreon member. You're yeah. our first Patreon. What do you do, you do? Timpanies, flutes, clarinet? Uh, what do you do? Uh, Bagpipes. All right. Uh, per <laughs> so, timpani would be, 
My no follow-ups, guys. No follow-ups, please. Back on a, a game night. Um, I'd like to just make yeah, an announcement. Uh, um, four, 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 four. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Eric. Go Thanks. back to enjoying our wonderful program today four, 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 in the privacy four, of your own four, microwave. Four, four, four. Thank you. Nothing wrong with me. What am I, monster.com? <laughs> what is this, Zip Recruiter? <laughs> he, just, he was just wanted a reference. He didn't want a job. Eight. No, he was Yeah, put us down. Who cares? We're, they're not going to call it. I'll be his reference. I don't mind. We, Doug, I got to see Doug out in the in the wild the other night. I'll tell you, that was exciting. That was pretty cool. I, I didn't recognize you. You had the mask on. You're, you're one of those uh, oh. maskers. Well, hmm. <laughs> I know you have it. You had to do it for work. You had to be safe. I am it was such an annoying way. And Rick, chime in on anything you want to talk. I mean, you know what I mean. I'm okay. not going to just do uh. fucking Charlie Rose you here. <laughs> you hear me? I'm just a fly on the wall. You're enjoying yourself. Yeah, you got everything you need. Yeah, I'm not a big talker. No? You're more of a visual artist. <laughs> I should make a movie right now. Maybe I am. <laughs> maybe this, fucking Bolex maybe out. Maybe I am making this movie. <laughs> your fucking Bolex out. Go get your Bolex, like Shinebox, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Goodfellas? Go get your fucking Bolex. I never saw Goodfellas. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> he, he, he you understand, Rick is so above it. I, I, de, I bet you I'd tell you 10 movies that I like. He would be like, sucks. Oh, haven't yeah. seen Ooh, it. You know what? I, I, that's I, what I you always something. say that, that movie's an abortion. <laughs> that's what you would say all the time. <laughs> that movie's an assault on I would cinema. say that. And I hate it, because I just like... I like good movies. I like sh fucking schlock. Yeah. I like uh, I like sappy shit. By the way, I found I was digging through some old bags <laughs> at home, <laughs> uh, and I had a courier bag. Yeah. And in the back pocket, I I opened it up, and there was a a large folder of DVDs, oh. full collection of a little something called The Sopranos that you lent me. Oh my god! In, in 2012. I'm wondering where those wow. DVDs were. Yeah. DVDs were. Yeah. You said, this is my favorite show. I want yeah. you to watch this. I never watched it. Oh, thanks, man. Oh, my God. I <laughs> never watched it. Get your fucking it. shine box. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I get, watched the movie last you. night. I tell you, I was crying. I saw this movie, 13 Lives, from Ron Howard. And it blew me away because, do you know, I mean, there was a great documentary made about this story, which is the, the, the 13 boys that were in the cave in Thailand. Oh, yeah. Who were trapped. Do you know that story? Yeah, Elon Musk. Oh, well, yeah, this makes this. If, they, about numbers. if you want to get annoyed at Elon Musk, watch either the documentary, which was terrific. And this this dramatization of it was beautiful. One, three. I'm not a big Howard fan. Well, this is what I'm, see, I, I want to get into this with you because I want to know why. One, two, Because what are movies for? There's a lot well, of reasons. that's the question, right? There's I mean, a lot no, of there's a place for, you know, the wallpaper yeah. movies. What about Potsy, Fonzie, any of those guys? <laughs> Well, this is, I tell you what, yes, of course, there's a little, there's, there's a Hollywood sheen to this movie, but the, the, the technical acumen of this film, the way they're shooting this, the way they're in these caves underwater, yeah, and yeah. the story, I don't think there's a better, <clears throat> more beautiful, life-affirming, in the best possible way See, to say that, is, is this movie, this is movie where, which, there's no bad guys, Fix it. Everybody's trying their best. And it's incredible. If you don't know the story, and it's, I'm not spoiling anything, because fucking A, man, like, read the news one day, yeah. and you'll learn. <laughs> oh, these soccer players were playing on the beach, and they got, they went, they kicked the ball too far, and next thing you know, they're in a cave. The hell's this? <laughs> that what happened? Fucking kids yeah. go into this cave. Kids, these are kids. Well, these they're kids. stupid. Hey, that's... <laughs> Some, yeah, the Philly. bad guy. That's Philly. So Rick's from the Philadelphia area. That's why we have a lot of Norristown. Yeah. Shout out to Norristown. But think about this. These guys, these kids get trapped in this cave. And it's monsoon season. So it's pouring rain and the cave floods. And these kids, everybody comes to the cave. They're like, we got to get these fuckers out of here. They don't know where they are. There's like six, I'm going to get this wrong. There's something like six or eight miles yeah. into this cave. Network of fucking kids. Is this the movie or you're telling us the story of the travesty? Uh -huh. I love when Tim retells the movie. <laughs> I know. People love it. Dude. People are not good enough. So <laughs> the, these, the Thai... You don't have to watch it. The Thai seals can't get past certain little chambers of this cave network, yeah, right? Travesty. They don't know if these kids are alive. 
these British expert, shut up, these Brit, British cave divers who are like world famous for going and diving under, they know every cave in the world, these lunatics. Fucking guy like this. What, oh, fucking kid in there? I'll know how to get in there. We'll go right in. That's what I'm going to do. It's big like that. You know, these are tough fucking cookies. Naya. These motherfuckers go, we're going in. We're going to go see if we can see these, find these kids. They got the scuba shit on. Give me some of this reverb. We're going in a fucking cave. We're going to get the fucking boys out, whatever it fucking takes. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, it's too deep. We can't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> it's too narrow. Anyhow, <laughs> these fucking guys. Eventually, nine days after these kids go missing, Rick, they pop up into one of the little openings in the cave. They're all there. Yeah. They're all on the beachhead. Doug. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they're nine days in the dark, right? And they're with their coach. And the coach was keeping him alive, he was teaching him to meditate, he was just like, we're just gonna have yeah. to... Obviously Did they have they, their ball with them? They could play a little soccer? No, they left the ball in the oh. field. So the movie was essentially just providing you with all this information of something that had already happened, <laughs> and then making it, yeah. making it fun and emotional. Not, Is that right? It, 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 was about the, it, was, it was about how the characters dealt with that situation. There, yeah. So they find the kids, but you think, okay, great, found the kids. What, Hi there. what a happy ending. <laughs> yeah. Cave divers come back out. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking cave divers come back. He's like, we found them, but here's the deal. There ain't no way to get them back out. Fucking, if we get them back out, they're going to drown. They're going to fucking panic they're going they're through these little fucking holes. They had to knock them out. Did they so, bring the kids any, like, uh, cliff snacks, bars? Yeah, or they, they brought them cliff bars. Don't worry about that. Did they give him any kind of medication? Shut up. Okay. <laughs> Shut up. They give him medication. I think they did. So, okay. well, this is what I'm telling okay. you. Oh, okay. Meanwhile, Elon time? Musk is saying, oh, why don't I uh, send him a submarine? Uh, they could take a Come submarine. And... <laughs> Fucking guy doesn't know shit. <laughs> then, he, then he says one of these guys is a pedophile. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Whatever. Uh, what a, that what a saved bad him? guy. That's the one of the, that saved him? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so then the guys come back. One of them died. One of the the divers. One right? of the seal guys yeah, got yeah. trapped. In, it's incredibly small little. And you're. It's. Imagine this. I, have you ever scuba dove? No. <laughs> scuba dove. Scuba dove. <laughs> Fucking. Scary. So three and a half hours to go what to get to where they are, yeah. and then three and a half hours back. Let me ask you this. Go ahead. So the kids could just walk. <clears throat> they just walk down a cave like super deep, and then the water, the tide yeah. rose. Yeah, no, like it was it was a monsoon. Monsoon came in. So this isn't an ocean situation. No. It's this fresh water. Fresh water. So they were drinking. They were able to get water. Oh, okay. Doug doesn't believe uh. it happened. <laughs> so let me just finish this Never up. Never happened. Let me finish this up. They, this, these two cave guys, brilliant. Like uh, Colin Farrell and uh, Viggo Morganson play these two guys. They, it's a tremendous performance. Really? Yeah. Treme <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, you see Colin Farrell in this movie. I'm weeping for the guy. He's beautiful performance. <laughs> He's a beautiful man. Yeah, I'm like I, 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 I didn't know much. I, I didn't know much. I love Colin Farrell now. Yeah, it's great. So, anyways, yippee guy, motherfucker. He goes. They they come out and they're like, this is these kids. We're gonna be if What's we're it doing called? anything. The cave? What's it it's called? Thirteen lives. Thirteen. We bring lives. these kids out. We're gonna be bringing out dead bodies. <laughs> that's that's a for certain thing. Then the one guy goes, you know, what we can fucking do. We call Dr. Dave. Dr. Dave, this is all true, in Let Australia. Dr. Door. Dave is another one of these uh, cave divers. Like, they all know each other. They're all on the same fucking Reddit forum. And he goes, the can you get over body. here? Flies him in. And Dave, and he goes, what if we anesthetize these kids? Yeah. And he goes, fuck you. We're not fucking doing that. It's with never been what done. Is, with uh, roofies or what? With uh, Maybe what, whatever you do to put people under. I don't know what it is. Ketamine. And he goes, it's one in a million. This is not going to work. I don't know how to control their breathing. Three and a half hours underwater. <laughs> Anyways, in the course of a couple of days, they fucking put a nervous. plan together. They put a plan together. This, the coordination between the Thai seals and the government and the people and the volunteers is incredible it's like a it's like you've never seen people work together so beautifully mm. these guys go in there one at a time they take the kids i've actually seen that in a ron howard movie people work that that beautifully yeah. <laughs> well it worked because 
they, each kid gets a needle, no. gets knocked out, gets, I mean, they put the scuba shit on them, and then one at a time, <laughs> There's just three and a half hours. <laughs> you believe shit. this? That's insane. Dude, I did not know that part of the story. What the hell? got to watch do the it. doc. Well, it, the doc is great. But man, I watched the doc, and I watched the movie last night. I thought the movie was fantastic. I got to watch the and movie. And so did uh, Vigo have an uh, English accent? Yeah. I think Correct. it was, can you look it up? Because I, I, my wife said it was Vigo Morgan. I didn't even recognize him. He was so good. Yeah, well, he's... <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you're watching fucking Crimes of the Future, some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, Vigo. Yeah. Played Richard I don't Stanton. like Crimes of the Future. No, I didn't like it either. <laughs> I thought it was like, I mean, what the fuck is this? Here's a pic the of the team. We got a picture of the team here. Wes, can you pull that up? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, we were, were not young, talking bro. about that. Yeah, when we were young. <laughs> Everybody looks great. So that was the, the dive team. The subject. I, I thought, thought you were pulling up the soccer team. The dive team. Oh. <laughs> which one's the rest of you? These are the ones they, so, they saved? <laughs> yeah, these are the guys who saved No, the well, team. let me just wrap this up because I just want to say one more thing. I, I, I love the story. I thought it was very well made, technically very well made, very well acted. I thought it was a, it was a great story about people working together and... You know, well, we need more of that. We don't yeah. need so much negativity. We'll just agree to disagree. Yeah, but why can't we have some things in the world that have, that, See, that remind us that we can that's be better? All, this is my 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 shit so here. There's so much shit. There's that's so many all, horror that's movies. That's all we have in popular entertainment no. in, in in America for a hundred years is the aspirational tale. That's true. And so that then now then there's a surplus of hope. Yeah, Which but lately, is actually lately there's a lot toxic. of dark. Lately there's a, been a lot of yeah, dark. No, but, like you know, horror no. movies are very popular. What do horror movies have to say? It's all nihilism. Yeah. Uh, it depends. I mean, yeah. It depends which, which horror movies you're talking about. But, and I agree. There's a lot of schlock. And there's, but I, I just think there's a well-crafted... And my only last point on this is about the business and the industry. I don't know who I, how many people have seen this movie. I, my wife and I are watching this being like, this is fantastic. This should, you know, uh, like, this feels like a... It feels like a big blockbuster movie in a lot. Like a well-done yeah. adult movie. But it also is action and drama... And it's just plopped up on Amazon Prime. Like, it's just, there, there it is. Like, yeah. who's, go, who's watching that? 13 Lives. Just, I don't know. Well, if the kids were in a I cave, mean, couldn't Batman show up? You can buy it on iTunes at Amazon.com. <sighs> that would have been a cool movie. Many, right? know, many know this, but I tried to get my kids to watch the original, not the original, but, but and, and don't get into the Batman 66. Okay. Oh, man. Can't okay. hear it from okay. me. I love Batman. All right. <laughs> So can't tired. even get them to watch that. Yeah. I'm trying to get them Batman. to watch the Michael Keaton movie. <laughs> I put that on the other night too. And they were refused. They simply mm -hmm. refused. I had the same experience last week. Exact same thing. It's like it started and then yeah. I, get to, I, don't I want this. maybe they'll like Beetlejuice. They like Beetlejuice. Yeah, they love Beetlejuice. Yeah. I should have said My it's by the same guy. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, Rick, I just I want you to enjoy your life more. I want you I'm to watch sorry. movies that are fun. And <laughs> I like the Fablemans. You know, I like I like some I, I like some fun movies. It's, what's like it's the a what's the life. what's the most wholesome? Yeah, you like it? What what, what do? Yeah, life? it's one of my favorite movies. What about Preston Sturges? It should have just stopped like, after that. Do you like Preston Sturges? You ever see uh, Sullivan's Travels? That's the movie I'm into right now. I should no, I get to see that. I like that. Fantastic old '40s yeah. movie. I saw that. You love it? A long time. I haven't oh, been yeah. forever, but yeah, it's good. So good. What, All right. What is uh, Phil Braun on? Well, I was just wondering, what are you watching? Like, like I don't these time these days. I don't have time for like long ass movies anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, with everything going on, I don't. Do you watch TV? Like TV what's shows. The best, what's to? the last movie what's, you saw that you just thought yeah, was fantastic? Yeah, that I should see. Uh, of recent era. Well, on the plane, we watched Two Leslie, which oh, uh, I heard that was great. Well, uh, uh, Andrea Riseborough. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. She was amazing. I, I, I read this story about how there's this sort of organic uh, push to uh, acknowledge her performance in that. You just there you should have, be. Uh, yeah. You, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, have yeah. you seen Triangle of Sadness? I did, yeah. You, did you see it? I did. Yeah. I thought all of the shitting and vomiting was just... Right up really your alley. Wonderful. <laughs> That's... I'm unmixed on that one. I like I'm that. I, like I, I thought it kind of flattened out, you know. I mean, I, I really... The Square by Ruben Oslin... Incredible. She's I thought it was a little like yeah, this. Yeah. I, here's what I thought. I thought it was a little like it was. It was a little first drafty. Yeah, it was a little was, like you know, oh, it was, it was a rich, little, rich a little people more are bad. Dimensional, sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, rich people are bad. It, huh? How do you like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then all the people that are seeing it are fucking rich. The, you know, people. The, are like, oh, I'm not the, as bad as that guy. The Woody Harrelson <laughs> section. Absurd. Yeah, it was absurd, but it was moving into off the precipice of absurdity into you know it, it felt you know volatile. 
couldn't in, take this in a, movie in a good white way. noise. I couldn't take that movie. Oh, really? I couldn't take that. Movie. I d- I thought I would hate it, and I and I didn't quite oh. hate it. As you know, I I sort of uh, all the t- all the, it, it all was like you're watching a play. It was like very the stilted and the dialogue was horrible. Yeah. So, it was, a, it was a bummer. I'm surprised you liked it. I thought you would have deep contempt for that. I, I don't know. Maybe I was in a very susceptible mood. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised at this. I thought you would have found that film vile. Well, you know, I thought it did. It, it, sort of, <laughs> it sort of hit the notes of like Spielberg. and, and, and Well, it and, felt like a, like an 80s Spielberg movie. Yeah, but but it felt like in the, in the actual voice of that stuff as opposed to, it felt like a continuation of something as opposed yeah. to just a I think I'm, I think I find Adam Driver off-putting. He's very tall. Yeah. But what's your Odd. opinion about Puss in Boots, The Last Wish? I heard it was good. I didn't see it. Um, all right, enough Should we movie talk. To talk. Phil? Yeah. <laughs> we should have a real re- movie review show. Yeah. And fuck this on cinema shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's get into it with you and me. We could be the new, yeah. uh, like, an NBA. I think honest. we talked about this. We were in a hotel at Sundance together, sleeping in two beds next to each other. We were? Yeah, and we started doing <laughs> what this. What happened uh, to my memory? <laughs> <laughs> we talked about doing a movie review show. Oh, yeah. Where we would be in two, two beds. <laughs> <laughs> Twin beds, like in the old movies. Sometimes we'd fall asleep, sometimes not. <laughs> hey, everybody. Whoa. Hey, Phil. <laughs> Uh, I want to welcome Matt back from Australia. It's great to have him back. Thanks, Phil. Being on that little uh, remote tropical island must have been fun. And uh, it's Australia. Uh, it's not. I mean, it's technically an island. I guess. Oh, well, it's a continent. I don't think it's. it's not were you able to uh, communicate with the people there, Matt, or understand the language and all that? Yes, no problems with that, Phil. <clears throat> How about uh, one thing that I was kind of curious about just, you know, being on a foreign country is like, what's the tipping like there when you go out to eat? And uh, is the tipping different there than it is in the United States? <laughs> they, they don't tip, actually. Oh, fact. British European it's model. It's not no it's tipping factored, really. model. Factored into the yeah. price of I'll everything. tell you what else, real quick, what I really like. They, a lot of places, you go order your food at the counter and you pay. And then they just bring it to you. That's like even in sort of semi nice restaurants. Oh, yeah. The other thing they do. I like a waiter. Yeah. Well, server. But, but then the like server that? ones, I did like that. It speeds things up. Um, but then when they did have regular serving, they'd bring the little machine to you with uh, the check and you just pay right away. That's beautiful. They, people are starting to do that here. It's also very popular in Canada. Yeah, makes sense. And <laughs> it's all tap. It's all tap. None of this <laughs> swiping. Did you visit the. Why uh, am I so up? Why so <laughs> he wanted to get that in. So. <laughs> Did you Interesting. All right, what else? Well, you know, <laughs> what other, one what of the big cur- uh, curiosities do you have about Australia? Yeah, well, nothing really. That was it. Uh, because, you know, everybody's crazy about uh, how celebrities tip here in the United States, whether, uh, I don't know, how about you, Tim? You're a good tipper or considered a bad tipper? Or, I'm, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I tip 20% on, on, as, as, uh, as dictated by my, my, uh, the culture I grew up in. Well, I had a I had a pretty viral tweet uh, a few weeks back where I've been following Matthew Perry around different restaurants, and he is one of the great tippers in, in all of Hollywood. Uh, where he'll he'll sit down in a restaurant. Uh, one time he was at the uh, the great uh, you probably heard of the place the uh, the El Coyote there in yeah. uh, Hollywood Mexican restaurant legendary. Mexican restaurant. Uh, Matthew Perry went in one time. They gave him uh, he ordered two beef tacos. And the waitress just brought him two empty taco shells. Nothing, oh, nothing no. in them. Mm. He ate the taco shells, didn't say a word, left a five hundred dollar tip. My oh, God, God. <laughs> Matthew Perry, so the uh, who's that? Again? The idiot <laughs> from Friends. 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 Yeah. yeah. And you're saying you had a viral tweet about this? Well, I don't <laughs> yeah, he left. He ate a bug on, that was on a salad, and he left a thousand dollar tip. Oh, wow. Didn't complain at all. Uh, one wonderful. time he went into uh, Dantana's, the um, yeah, Dantana's famous Italian place there. there. Yeah, Matthew Perry showed up. Uh, had a had a just a great white suit. I got a picture of him outside there. I don't know if you can see him out there in front. Uh, just a pristine can you see, suit. Can I see the picture? Oh uh, yeah, it's Phil it's right there. Up. Oh, get yeah. Let's cut back to Phil. Oh, there we go. <laughs> 
Uh, just looking sharp there, about to head in for an Italian restaurant. He went in there. They just dumped, uh, accidentally, of course, uh, spaghetti sauce all over him. Oh, no. Matthew just wa- he just took it, put it back on the plate, politely ate uh, the spaghetti off the plate, and uh, didn't didn't complain at all. <laughs> Left seven hundred dollar tip under, oh, the, uh, oh, under really? the plate. Just beautiful. Um, but you know who's a bad tipper? You know who's considered a really bad tipper? You're not uh, going to like this, Tim. Tipper Gore? Gore? Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, Paul McCartney is a notoriously oh, no. terrible, oh. terrible oh, tipper. Like, well, they, he's British. They don't tip at all. But go ahead. Let's, let's hear about this. Well, he's been here in the States long enough to know uh, he's expected sure. to tip. Well, of course. And uh, uh, he was uh, spotted at Spago's, the famous uh, Spago's in Los Angeles. Spago. Spago. Oh, closed, my, I, I thought think, it was. Maybe it isn't. <laughs> it must have been when it was still open. Mm-hmm. But uh he uh, he left a uh, a caveman script uh, instead of uh, a tip <laughs> that was autographed. Uh, and the way I had to talk to the waitress afterward, she was very very upset uh, by this and uh, immediately tossed that into the trash. Wow, so, that's got uh, a Paul McCartney uh, signature on it. It's got to be worth something. Yeah, um, maybe a couple of bucks on eBay. Um, and then uh, another time he went into uh, Cindy's Diner, which uh, oh, Nick and I've yeah. had. Yes. And uh, I, I snuck in after uh, Paul was there. And uh, this is what uh, what was found. Hang on a second here. This is what was found on the, uh, on the table, if you can see. Uh, he signed it, Sir Paul McCartney, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> and then uh, he put... Uh, I counted to zero, which, if you you know, is famous verse uh, from the song uh, "Arrow Through You." Oh, oh counted to zero. Today, yes. Oh, wow. yes, a pretty rude, wow. actually. Yeah. An obscure reference. Very obscure reference. Put in a tip. Yeah. No, I don't even know that one. <laughs> That's just Paul's style, I guess. Um, a dick. But I mean, yeah, but that waiter could probably sell that somewhere. You know, someone would buy well, that. Well, that's not an official signature either. Though. No, it was well, a duplicate so copy so. too. So. Oh, yeah, that's right. But why not uh, leave a couple of bucks? You know, I don't know. And then um, uh, the last time I saw him, he was at Tam O'Shanter's. Yeah. Uh, um, and it's just uh, Tam O'Shanter, and, and, but. <laughs> I keep thinking it's like owned by these people. I guess so. It's uh-huh. my mistake. I'm kind of new. Uh, stalking around in Hollywood, but uh, yeah, kind of uh, another creepy, time, by the way, too. This, you're just stalking all these people, and I don't like it. But. Well, it's just Matthew Perry and Paul McCartney. They're the only two that I follow. <laughs> well, but, uh, one's too many. And uh, well, like this the night, time, the night crawler, the night stalker. That oh yeah, yeah. check. Well, G- yeah, well, I do wear a mask out at nighttime, so I can't really be seen out in the bushes and that sort of thing. So <laughs> okay. Uh, what was the he, experience of Tam O'Shanter? Because we got to get to lean year. What's up? Yeah, well, he he uh, instead of a tip, he left uh, a handwritten uh, honey pie two, <laughs> which um, really uh, you know you just read the lyrics and it's kind of like uh, you know she was she oh. was working she was a working girl again uh, north of England she way was a now working she's girl again north now she's hit England the big way. time again. Uh, this is what I'd say again is really kind of not really very uh, creative on so his part. So he just uh, put for Honey Pie Two just wrote again with the same lyrics. Pretty much, uh, oh. that's that's what he's. <laughs> I guess he's got cooking there. Um, he's a rascal. But, uh, this one. I like burgers. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> worth a lot more than a twenty percent tip. I I would imagine. Mm-hmm. I don't hear a lot of people clamoring for Honey Pie Two, but uh, no. you know you never know. Uh, you never know, but. Uh, I like veggie burgers. It's going to be on my card before. Quesadilla. Um, Quesadilla. So, all right. Well, th- but yeah, I'll be. Interesting um, stuff. Yeah. Well, I got more. You know, I'll be back at it tonight. I'll be uh, <laughs> looking around and you know what? seeing let what it, I let... can find. Are you in town? Like, uh, why don't you come hang out? You know, if, if you're in LA, well, stalking I am, celebrities. Yeah. I am in town. <laughs> I'm kind of like on a week to week lease here right now. I just kind of uh, just kind of moved some of my stuff in. Uh, I love your huge you know, office chair. Yeah, um, this is. I brought my chair, and then I brought this lamp, uh, and I'm here just you know short term. 
The stocks and Paul McCartney around. and uh, Matthew Perry. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. So All right. I'll be back out tonight. I'll we'll see, you guys, uh, <laughs> see you guys later. <laughs> I would just leave these people be. You know, I think you've established right. their tipping and uh, let, leave them be. We don't need any more intel on that. I don't want to be an accessory to any of this. All right. Okay. Thanks, Phil. All right. See you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Take care, Phil. Jesus Christ. Bye. So I Thanks, Phil. I'll cut it in three. Now we're going to change the uh, mood of the show at the, for the at the at this point, Honey and mustard. Uh, hear a track. <laughs> a live yeah, let's send the band in. Let's, let's bring in the band. Bring in the band. Bring in the band. Bring in the band. We got Emily and uh, and Eric coming in. And this is Lean here. They're going to play us a song. Then we're going to take a break. No. Of course, visit uh, visit us live on Friday at the Lodge Room in LA. Tickets tickets are still uh, tickets are still available, I believe. And uh, we'll come back after the break. I want to talk to Emily. She has an incredible, interesting uh, career outside of the band that we're going to get into. And I believe. Uh, we're going to, uh, I'll tell you about my bad hair day at Sundance with Rick. Vic, uh, Doug has got a slideshow. And one other thing we're going to talk about. Big debate. Big, we're going to, I don't know, we've been pushing this off for We can push now, it off to another week, doesn't matter. We want to have the great uh, dwarf debate. Um, <laughs> we talk about the great, well, I believe, great dwarf on golf, yeah. Tim Conway character. Vic has an alternate opinion. I have a lot to say on that, yeah. And Remember Dorf? I grew up on Dorf. Grew up Ooh. on Dorf. <laughs> So we'll see how that goes. But uh, for now, please enjoy this new tune from this record that I just threw off into the piano. Lean Year, you can pick up your copy digitally or vinyl. No track listings on the back, big mistake. Um, <laughs> beautiful music from Lean Year, and we'll take a break and be back after these moments. Well. E starts with an easy way out. Hold on, hold on. Now it starts. Let's go! <laughs> Take two. Well, E starts with an easy way out. Then it goes back to wrestling the body, the tongue, and the toes. I am leaving the edges. The fingers have felt they are not to the weather, but better, I guess. Than the cough in the corner, the bed in the room, it's the soft hand of science on a cold afternoon. Can we stop with the thicket and move to the Sway with the car or a wheel, you can push me and pull me. I'm good with the game, it's like falling downstairs and falling again.
one's applauding in this room. How dare I'm you? I'm looking for my, my uh -huh. drop. All right, that was beautiful. That was I awesome. got lost in a trance there, man. I went, I went somewhere else, man. I went somewhere else. If you're watching us in the future, sign up to patreon.com slash office hours live to hear the second half of the show today. Uh, Lodge Room, Friday night. TimHeidecker.com slash live for your UK Europe tickets. And for the two Tims. And uh, Doug, anything to plug real quick? No, no, sir. Obviously not you. No. Actually, I do. No, two no. Wet Crew is coming back. We're doing a show at the oh, nice. Dynasty Typewriter. Oh, great venue. Wow. All right. Be back after five. And you guys are going to stick around. See you soon. <laughs>